I, Andrew Underwood, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. Welcome to this week's show. I'm your host, Sean. This guy is fucking stupid! Armstrong. You can't discuss gun crime without discussing the actual problems. You know, the ones the government wants you, wants you to ignore. The FBI crime statistics show that 90% of all murders committed with a gun are committed by released felons. At least 25% are actually on probation or parole when they kill. As your government, both state and federal are attempting to disarm you. They are putting you at risk by releasing the animals that kill. 13 News at 10. Horror inside a woman's home. A suspected burglar breaks in while she showers, but what happened next has a local community shaken. Police say that suspect robbed and raped the woman before running away. Good evening, I'm Colleen Sullivan. And I'm Sam Shane. Let's go to Ron Jones. He's live in Sacramento, new tonight, with uh, why this career criminal was even walking the streets in the first place, Ron. Oh my God, that's hilarious. I have proof right here that he is a career criminal. We're talking about almost 70 pages of criminal history here, from drug abuse to fighting with cops, frequently fighting with cops. However, the state still classifies him as nonviolent. Well, naturally, I think it's horrible. People living near this busy light rail station at 12th and East Streets can't believe their ears. It frightens me. A neighbor is allegedly brutally raped and robbed. The victim did not know the suspect in this case. 29-year-old Aaron Suggs, recently released from state prison, is now facing a litany of felony charges for not only sexual assault, but kidnapping. Investigators say Suggs broke into a home while the victim was taking a shower. She got out and noticed the back door was open. And once the victim went to go check the back door. She had no idea the suspect was in there with her. Grabbed her and a violent attack ensued. After the sexual assault, Suggs allegedly ransacked the home while the victim listened from a nearby room. Almost 12 hours later, officers caught him sitting at a downtown bus stop. And in his possession was some of the belongings that he had taken from the victim's home. So we lock up real tight at night. <laughs> Neighbors are still shaken. Sacramento police say Suggs was let out of prison early during the process to reduce the prison population. Police say that's because the state classified Suggs as nonviolent. I guess he shouldn't have been released. The Department of Corrections yeah. tells us Suggs fulfilled his time for drug possession and was now the responsibility of Sacramento County probation. Well, here's a live look once again That's at the Sacramento Pass County Jail. Suggs is still facing felony charges. Now, as I pointed out, all 70 pages here dates back to 1996. However, he may possibly be heading back to state prison for a violent charge this time. All right, Ron, thank you very much. Live for us tonight in Sacramento. 43% of prisoners nationally return to the lockup within three years. Some of the highest rates were in California. Duh. 57.8%. In Missouri, 54.4. New York is slightly under the national average at 39.9%. Way to go, New York! I guess that SAFE Act really isn't going to make a difference. Not. Oregon had the lowest. Only 22.8% of inmates released in 2004 returned within three years. Could it be they returned in four years, five years, six years? And studies show a majority of those animals committed violent acts. Police are looking for 41-year-old Marlon Ricks, who was just paroled last April after spending more than 20 years in prison for murder. News Channel 5's Deborah Lee live in the newsroom tonight with more. And Deb, do police believe Ricks is armed and dangerous? Oh, absolutely they do. Now, we're going to put his picture up in just a second. Police believe he's in a 2004 Maroon Chevy Trailblazer. If you see him, don't approach him. 
call the police. According to the Ohio Department of Corrections, Marlon Ricks is still on parole for the 1990 murder of a 53-year-old Euclid man. Now, Garfield Heights police are looking for him. After finding his girlfriend's body in the backyard of this house on Grace Avenue, where neighbors say Ricks lived with his sister. Now, you can't totally negate the stupidity of the woman. Although I do hate to talk bad of the dead, it's to make a point. Novel idea, folks. Don't put yourself in danger. Stay away from these animals. Don't feed the animals. I have no idea what these women think, but it costs a lot of them their lives. Uh, Marlon seemed like a very calm guy. He, he didn't seem violent. He didn't see. I, he went to work every day. I, I seen him go to work every day. You know, come home every night. Yeah, I believe he worked second shift because he'd carry his bag to the bus stop and. That's about it. I mean, uh, if it's him, I, I wouldn't expect it to be him. Jim Wright says he last saw his neighbor Marlon Ricks on Saturday, and at that point, everything seemed normal. But things were anything but normal by the time police were called to the house just before noon today. They found the young woman's body near the back porch. She'd been stabbed more than once, and they're not sure how long the body had been here. You know, it's our understanding sometime this weekend, perhaps. Chief Robert Sackett says the mother of the 25-year-old victim had reported her missing from her home in Oakwood a few days ago. Neighbors here in Garfield are shocked. It's just sad that we have to worry about stuff like this. You know, this quiet neighborhood, everyone keeps to themselves. And stuff like this shouldn't happen around here. It's scary, like, I, like he said, like, it's doesn't happen and you have to worry about everything now so it's really scary but it's sad too really sad that it just happened like that only 15 percent of all americans have criminal records yet more than 90 percent of murder suspects have a history of crime their criminal careers have its six or more years in length including four major adult felonies in addition to their often extensive juvenile records that first guy had 70 freaking pages a New York Times study of the 1,662 murders in that city between 2003 and 2005 found that more than 90% of the killers had criminal records. Baltimore police records show similar statistics for its murder suspects in 2006. In Milwaukee, police reported the most, that most murder suspects in 2007 had criminal records, while a quarter of them killed while on probation or parole. Out frickin' standing! The greatest majority of Illinois murderers from the years 1991 to 2000 had prior felony records. 80% of Alabama murder arrestees had previously been arrested at least once for a drug offense. 70% had three or more prior drug arrests. Gangbangers. In addition to their arrests for other crimes. We all know what happened in Webster, New, New York. Thanks to an animal who did a mere 17 years for smashing a 92-year-old woman's head in with a hammer. But they keep disarming you while they let the animals run free. Folks, this is not a wild animal refuge. Quit letting them run free. Police have not yet released the name of the victim because everyone in her family hasn't been notified. Now, in addition to murder, Marlon Ricks also did time for aggravated burglary, kidnapping, and felonious assault. Again, police believe he is armed and dangerous, and you should call your nearest police department if you think you know where he is tonight. Deb Riley, News Channel 5. I'm not going to lie. I would prefer, prefer you shoot the son of a bitch, then call the police because those morons are going to let him out again. He committed murder, burglary, felonious assault, and kidnapping. What do you have to do in this country to be erased? I don't know. Piss off the federal government? Federal marshals call him Northeast Ohio's most dangerous fugitive. But last year, the Ohio Parole Board set convicted killer Marlon Ricks free. Now he's wanted for murder again. Tonight, an exclusive Five on Your Side investigation reveals the number of inmates being paroled is rising. Well, the parole board says decisions to free violent inmates like Marlon Ricks are not driven by in efforts to increase that parole rate. But records we found show in the first six months of this year Paroles have doubled. In 2011, Ohio's parole board released 133 inmates. Marlon Ricks was one of them. Judy Coleman says that decision cost her daughter's life. Marlon has never been allowed to be 
there to meet her that she might be alive today. Less than a year after being released, Ricks is suspected of murder and is on the run. I'm feeling that the board should be made to pay for releasing him and him taking my brother's life. They should be charged as accomplices as far as I'm concerned. The son of a bitch should have been dead. When you find a rabid animal, you put it down. Take him long after he got out and he snapped again, apparently. Through DeSerto oversees Ohio's Fugitive Task Force. The crime that occurred this year in March, the stabbing was brutal. Danielle was stabbed 14 times. Her body found at this Garfield Heights home. It was a, a brutal stabbing. Brett Van Oker runs an Ohio watchdog group that monitors the parole board. Is it your belief that the parole board is releasing dangerous inmates back into the community? I'm absolutely 100% certain of it. So, Five on Your Side reviewed parole board records. We found 138 inmates were released in the first six months in 2012, compared with just 62 released in the same period a year ago, up 122 percent. Records since June have not been released. Yet, a check of the prison system's website shows Alfonso Johnson, convicted of killing a 16-year-old honor student, was granted parole just last month, despite objections from prosecutors who called Johnson a clear danger to society. Again, I have to ask, what do you have to do to be erased in this country? You kill someone, all you have to do is bide your time, and they'll release you back onto the streets. People, arm yourselves. You are on your own. Cynthia Mauser chairs the Ohio Parole Board. No, there's no effort to attempt to increase the parole rate. Even so, the prison system's own budget shows $188 million in cuts and a goal to reduce the prison population by 600 inmates by July of next year. A goal displayed on a tote board at prison headquarters. Still, Mauser insists inmates are paroled on a case-by-case -case basis after careful evaluation. We review and attempt to um, receive and solicit as much information as we can about the individual case and the individual offender. Um, and we try to get as much information as we can from all interested parties. Including letters. If honesty were suddenly introduced into politics, it would throw everything off. The whole system would collapse. And I think deep down the American people know that. The American people like their bullshit out front where they can get a good, strong whiff of it. Cuyahoga County prosecutors advised that Ricks posed a clear danger and requested a full board hearing where the board was warned. There exists substantial reason to believe that Ricks' release into society would create undue risk to public safety. You can talk about Marlon or cannot talk? No, we don't talk about specific cases. So we obtained the parole board's records. It ruled that circumstances surrounding Rick's murder, kidnapping, and aggravated assault was very unlikely to reoccur. He is, like I said, I, I believe our, our most dangerous fugitive that we're seeking. And sometimes families and crime victims have no idea that convicted killers have been released. Since when in this country do animals have more rights than their victims? Arm yourselves. Defend yourselves. Get trained to defend yourselves. And I don't mean some stupid NRA course. Find a professional. Work together. Watch each other's backs. Because as I've shown, no one else is. In the Ricks case, the parole board provided notification. But when Paul Raymond Saltz was released for murdering 15-year-old Roberta Francis in 1974, her father was never contacted. Robert Francis learned of Saltz's 2004 release in the newspaper. The parole board never called. No. Never asked you to come down to talk. No. Saltz molested another girl in 2006 and is back in prison. Some of them just get kind of a slap on the wrist, you know, and uh, they're up for parole again. The parole board admits families and victims have been left in the dark. Why was he still drawing breath? What right did he have to draw one more breath? Instead of arresting people for murder and molestation 20 times, remember the first guy had 70 frickin' pages 
I'd prefer that you walked in and blew the animal's head off, because they're going to let them out again. That would not surprise me at all. And with Salt once again up for parole in January, Roberta's father will be ready. You know, it takes a certain type of person to, to do that to a child. I, I don't think you're ever going to... They're ever going to reach a place where they... You can allow them back on the street again. Well, there's pending legislation right now called Roberta's Law that would improve how victims and family members are notified about parole. You can check out the link on Newsnet5.com to learn a whole lot more on this, as well as this phone number, 866-4WANTED, to report any information you might have on Marlon Ricks, who remains a fugitive tonight. How about legislation to allow citizens to better protect themselves? Something you're failing to do. And the Supreme Court says you don't have to do it. I'm enraged by this country's view on animals. Real friggin' animals. We'll put down a pit bull, but a murderer or a sex offender, you know, we can't do that because, you know. And those families need that kind of notification. You certainly. Hey, Ron, are there any records that show the uh, likelihood of reoffending? There, there is. Uh, the parole board says that uh, inmates in Ohio will recommit crime about one-third of the time and go back into prison, but they argue that that's one of the best rates in the country. I know people are going to bring up mass shootings. Let's look at who commit mass shootings and another problem per perpetuated by outside forces. The psychiatric industry are making killers as if they were stamping them out on an assembly line. Oh, you have a mental problem? Take the blue pill. I've been through it myself. Let's look at those pills, shall we? I'm only going to take five of the drugs prescribed and their side effects. Some of their side effects. Let's look at Adderall. Benzedrine, Detrana, Dexedrine, and Ritalin. I have a list of 61 side effects for these drugs, from abdominal pain to zombie demeanor. Let's look at the ones that I most believe breed killers. Aggressive or hostile behavior. Wouldn't shooting a bunch of people be considered aggressive or hostile behavior? Depression. Hmm. A lot of people, uh, depressed people kill themselves with guns every year. Hallucinations. Never good to have around a firearm, is it? Mania. Are you sure these drugs help with mental illness or give mental illness? Psychosis. Awesome. Suicidal thoughts. Hey, mix a little aggressive or hostile behavior in there. You've got a mass shooter. Violent behavior. No shit. You see patterns? Every mass shooter, although they don't release that information, due to confidentiality, had been or was seen by one of these doctors. All while they're making these killers, they're disarming you. Stellar. Now, mental illness does not mean stupid. There is a plan to what they do. The Aurora Theater shooting scumbag I won't mention his name, I wish it was the dude that was in the rubber bag, drove by four or five theaters on his way to his target. Because guess what? They weren't gun-free zones. Let's look at our latest mass shooting at Fort Hood. He was undergoing uh, behavioral health and psychiatric treatment uh, for depression uh, and anxiety. Was he on any sort of medications? was on medication. So, uh, this general, a uh, uh, reporter just asked him if he believes his so soldiers should be allowed to carry concealed weapons. Um, he didn't think soldiers have the right to carry concealed weapons. How long did it take for the law enforcement to reach the scene? Uh, it was within minutes. Within minutes. The exact time, probably 10 to 15, maybe. So, exactly. you're saying that we should have concealed weapons, but it still takes 10 to 15 minutes for law enforcement to even reach the scene? Which means I would be safer in Iraq and Afghanistan because I'm armed and I can fight back. Stupidity kills people, not guns. Thanks for listening. I'm Sean Armstrong. I hope you keep listening. Have a good day.
I, Andrew Underwood, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. Thanks for listening to the Second Amendment for Dummies. You can catch the show every Thursday. Have a good day.